Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Jack Hobday from Anspach and Hobday. We're a brewery based in London. I'm pleased to be speaking with you. Jack, uh, you know, you've been one of the pioneers of the British craft scene, at least in London. And uh, uh, where are you now after you know, all these years? What have you learned and what is some of the experience? Well, it's very kind of you to call us uh, pioneers. I think uh, we've been going since 2013, 2014. So we're, we're nine, nine just about. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been quite a, it's been quite a journey. I think, uh, I guess we are one of the early ones. I still look up to breweries like the Colonel who are here today with us, who are, you know, a couple of years older, but we were, we were the fifth brewery in Bermondsey. And I guess we're probably best known for being part of the, the Bermondsey Beer Mile. Um, I think our brewery is probably best known for its dark beers. Um, it was a porter that got us going when we were home brewers. It was that that we won an award with that sort of kick-started things. And our most recent success, which is a beer I've got with me today, is our uh, London Black. Um, and that's, that's an evolution of the porter, which is a 6.7% beer. We've, we've got that on today. And then we've got London Black, which is a nitro. If you're going to communicate it quickly, it's it's a craft alternative to Guinness. I think it's more about uh, London, and it's not about saying Guinness is bad. It's about having a, a local offering which has the is at least inspired by the heritage of London, which was at one point the centre of the brewing world, and was certainly well the largest producing part, and was certainly um, porters with a with a mainstay. So this this beer's done fantastically well for us I guess it's part of the reason we, we, we've had the honor it's a nitro. of it's a nitro yeah the honor of, of, of being being here um, yeah 4.4 percent so a little bit uh, lower it's quite it's almost got like a milk chocolate character there's there's no lactose in it it's it's a it's just straight up porter but it's very smooth easy drinking uh, you know there's 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 coffee and uh, roasty notes as well but I, I get quite a lot of chocolate from it um, and uh, it's, it's become 60, 70 percent of our production, which is only two years old. And in our experience, uh, it, it's kind of humbling for one beer to have that much success. Uh, to knock out, for example, our pale being our best seller is it's good going. So that's pr yeah, that's pretty amazing. How, what's your production levels now? Have they recovered from the COVID crisis? And uh, what's the staffing level? Are you and uh, do you want to grow bigger or stay where you are? Co COVID is a really interesting one for us because we we'd actually just invent, we just moved to a new production site in Croydon. We still have our, our site in Bermondsey, and there's some mixed fermentation things going on there. But actually, uh, in Croydon, that's where most production was going. And we'd set that up just before the like first lockdown. It was like the stage was set, and then. It was very, very stressful time. We still, we, we, we just got our canning line going, so we moved to, to that, and, and uh, production went from 80% draft to 100% cans. And that was dramatic. I think it was dramatic for every brewer and very stressful. We, we made it through. We, we actually managed to grow through that time. And then um, uh, in the last year, we expanded our production. So we, we're now brewing on a 4,000 liter kit. When we started originally in Bermondsey, we were brewing on a 100 litre kit. So uh, there's the gap. And for a long time, we were on 1400 litres. Um, and this year has been, it's, uh, with London Black and, and a few other beers, uh, it's just sort of taken off for us. So we're, we're now looking at um, 5,000 hex litres, so 500,000 litres. Um, and that's, a year. yeah, that's, and that's growing. That's what we're on course for, for this year growing from about 3,500 last year. So we were on some big growth, which I'm very grateful for because it's, it's, it's not easy out there. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just very happy that people like our beer. You know, it's, it's, no, it's, it's a it, delicious beer. And I love the way it pours. It did remind me of Guinness when I saw it. Uh, so you mentioned the market. Uh, you know, brewers are starting to fall out in Belgium, for example, and so are the bars, which is a mainstay. I don't know how, what percentage of your sales are to them. Uh, do you? What, what is the craft scene mark uh, in I, the UK? Now? I think I, I was very worried coming out of Christmas. I think it was. It's always the hardest time for bars. You've got the. If your Christmas was good, you're fine. But January in the UK is not a good month for for beer drinking. The dry January sort of it's a real opposite to December and November. So I was very worried about that, but it, it, it appears to me that most of our customers seem to be doing okay. I, I, and I think uh, we're, we're doing, I, I see it, I mean, there's not much I can do. We, we had to, for example, put our prices up, but 
everything we can do to support the pubs is, is obviously a, a sort of priority. Um, the UK government is uh, adding a discount for draft beers, which is meant to level the playing field between the sort of s supermarkets have killed off a lot of pubs because people just go and stock up on, on cheap beer. And that's because pubs are just, by comparison, very expensive. So they're adding a discount to the duty that pubs, and I, I've been trying to support that with uh, a petition and, and our, um, our national trade body, SIVA, is working hard on that. So I think that's going in the right direction. Energy prices are a killer for everyone. Um, and I guess time will, time will tell. I mean, we're losing about three breweries a week at the moment in the UK. And um, yeah, I mean, all, all it makes me reflect on is we're very fortunate not to be in the same position, but it's still hard. It, I, we, you know, it, it sounds like I'm saying we, we, everything's fantastic, but we really needed to, to grow. So we we're kind of lucky. And if we hadn't, even though we were on reasonably good production before, it probably would have been game over or we'd be fundraising to try and survive. So we needed it. And I think for anyone who's come out of the pandemic and maybe they were more developed than we were, if they haven't recovered that or they haven't grown from it, I can see it being some very, very difficult. What, and uh, what is, what, what's your plans ahead then? Do you stay with your stock? And also, did, uh, did I, there's Brexit. Did that harm your sales to Europe in terms of now you're paying a uh, tariff or it's made your beer more expensive here? I think it's not helped, but it wasn't. The, the, I think COVID was more of a disaster. You know, we used to do a lot of beer to Italy and we've been very honored to sell beer to Belgium. I always say to people, there's, there's no better country where it means more to be selling beer, beer to, to um, very discerning customer base in, in Belgium. Uh, Belgium. So I think uh, in the end, post-COVID and with Brexit settled, actually things are starting to come back. Italy's come back online. We recently started working with Finland. Obviously, um, we're here in Belgium. Um, France is doing okay. They're not huge markets for us, but I think actually compared to what we were doing pre-pandemic, uh, pre-Brexit, we're probably growing beyond that now. So I think it's, it was time and adjustment that was the problem. You know, I, I'm sure most people would agree a lot of it seems like unnecessary faff that, that the, the, the Brits have done to themselves. But at, at the same time, where there's a will, you can make it work. And I think I think the biggest obstacle was the extra bureaucracy, just adding uh, unnecessary time and cost that frankly can be streamlined. At the end of the day, all you're really doing is switching out forms or adding a, an extra form. It's not it's not actually physically that different. We're still pretty close, it's, you know. So I'm optimistic that Brexit isn't the uh, end of the world for our export at all. I think we can, I think we can grow it. Um, and this, it, what I will say is post COVID, it's great to be back out and be able to travel yeah. much more freely. What, so you have your stable, you've introduced a new rendition of your beer which uh -huh. is doing fantastic where do you go from here do you uh, expand your line do you maintain you've just moved to a new uh, brewery do you kind well, of stabilize for a bit or do you keep growing is, I, is I, it's difficult because we've seen such an uh, such a buzz around London Black we've seen quite a few brewers in the UK effectively it's very flattering but come in and copy you know and and I'm not pretending we invented porters and you know it's Guinness who we can thank for nitro beers so we're not pretending it's ours to be like, oh, you're copying us. But there's a sense that if we don't push our, our sort of claim to being the, 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 the sort of original Nitro Porter of London through London Black, that, that maybe we'll be swamped out. And, and some of that reputation, uh, you know, is theirs to tr try and protect. So I, I don't think we could ever not consider growing because I think it's important to be effective. If you're not growing, you're dying, is my opinion. But that doesn't mean we have to grow at all costs for any, you know, and I don't think we're trying to become a, like world domination here. I think our, our uh, plan is always to celebrate what beer is in London, and I think we're, we're doing that. We, we are expanding some of the nitro, so actually also today uh, we have an Ordinary Bitter, which is a low ABV bitter that's also on nitro, and that's called Ordinary Bitter Smooth. And I can see a bit of diversification there. Um, I think I'm learning that where before we used to brew loads and loads and loads of different beers, maybe giving a little bit more effort to glassware and the presentation of individual beers helps that entire experience. And London Black, obviously I'm not in the 
uh, this is the tilting glass, but <laughs> brandy glassware is quite important. In fact, uh, Belgians do this very well with all of their, their beers and having the right glass for the right beer. So uh, actually this is very good for, for London Black, uh, basically being a tulip. Um, so I, uh, I think we'll look to develop some of our other brands. We do a, a Bermondsey Pale, we have the Ordinary Bitter Smooth, our IPA is doing very well, and, and, and maybe also some so start to get back to specials because they're good fun. And it, you know, people can travel again, collabs can happen. It's so, I always ask this sometimes, mm -hmm. do you still get down in the dirt in the brewing or, and uh, all that, or are you in the more in the management now? Yeah, and yeah. That's had a big change. Well, I mean, I was back in the homebrew days, I was always involved in the brews, and then I really look after business and, and marketing most, but. Uh, in the last month just gone, we've had, we almost had uh, just bad management probably, uh, someone off from production every week of, of, uh, of April and um, so I was kegging and, and uh, casking and uh, I didn't actually, I didn't get involved in the brew but um, yeah, not afraid to be, to be manual. I mean my business partner Paul, he's often out doing deliveries and we're only a team of 13. I think, you know, our growth has particularly been on distribution and that's obviously putting beer on pallets and sending that around the country but what we're doing locally we're, off, we're delivering it direct we'll go and do this the seller work for people will um will yeah we, we're involved on on every level and of course at festivals pouring you know excellent and much thanks for talking to the beer idiots and see you in the it's a pleasure Ahmed. thank you thank you so much cheers